Hi, good morning. Welcome to King Worldwide. My name is Lisa. Hello, everybody. This is my dad, Roy. We are coming Roy to you. Roy the boy. We're going to talk to you today about <laughs> victorious living. And here's a path. It's kind of a pathway. It's kind of like a um, overview of what we've been talking about for months and maybe years, but it's just a good refresher. So go ahead, dad. You know, I'm the type of person that uh, I, I like to have a game plan as to whatever I'm going to do in life. And, uh, and you can call it a schedule or you can call it uh, as far as an outline or whatever you want to call a plan. it. plan. But, uh, but kind of like a pathway. If, if I'm going to do something, I'd like to know as far as, you know, w what to do. And, and that's what came up as far as for the, uh, uh, for the broadcast this morning for both of us is that, as Lisa said, we've discussed many topics in the mm -hmm. past, many, many topics in the past. And, uh, but today's, if you will, outline is just an abridged version, abridged being an incomplete list, but it's a solid foundation on which you can build. Mm -hmm. And um, so remember our foundational scripture is Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Okay. There, there are five little uh, five little points. Uh, points to this path, and and again, it's not com it's not what what we call uh, unabridged, which is complete. It's a bridge which is incomplete. So so uh, there's going to be be people at different levels of your walk of faith, and sure. you're going to see how you apply how it applies to you. And, and it's going to be other things you can add to this, but this is this is just foundational type stuff, just like the foundation to a house is that this is foundation for everybody and then dependent upon what big a house you want to build what size house you want to build would depend upon what you add to it so first one's live in love live in love not the world's way of love agape yeah. love no question galatians 5 6 says that faith worketh by love faith worketh by love lisa mentioned the agape love and it's probably the thing that's uh, paramount in my mind whenever I'm in a situation where that uh, I need to be lovely is that agape love, no strings attached to it, and expect nothing back in return. For example, if you let somebody on the highway, you let somebody come out and pull in front of you, and if they don't wave or what give you a sign, no big deal. Agape love, simple example, you don't expect anything back in return. You give because Jesus gave it to you. What Gape Love is not, is not self-centered. It's God-centered. <clears throat> so I did a lot of counseling and therapy, and a lot of times they wanted me to use the word selfish. And I understand that point because if one is a people pleaser, that is not healthy. That means that there's a fear and security. But when we're God-centered, then if we're God-centered, focus it on the word the Holy Spirit will always tell us who and when to help and and whatnot and how to serve and how to take care of ourselves as well, if you want to use those words. Agape love is not full of worry, unbelief, and doubt. Agape love is knowing and trusting and no striving. Here is the scripture, Galatians 5, 6, six. is that right? Yeah. From I'm going to use a good news translation today. It says, for when we are in union with Christ Jesus, Neither circumcision or the laws make any difference at all. What matters is faith that only works through agape love. Next. Picture love as the foundation to the house. I, I want to create a little word picture there because it'll, it'll make more sense to go through the other four items. Number two, point, time in the word. Romans ten seventeen fa says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word. Hebrews 11.6 says, it's impossible to please God without faith. So therefore, when we want to please God, we've got to have faith. You get faith by hearing the word and love is the foundation to faith because faith worketh by love. And so, I've been taught for years as far as that uh, what you do is to, if you want a, a basic thing, read one chapter out of, out of the, the Word every day. Just read one chapter. You know, you, you got to have a starting point, and that's what I did. But then uh, my trainer here, 
uh, she, she the Holy ta Spirit told she me. Taught, she taught me as far as to uh, to go ahead and implement what I call the dynamic duo. Now it is verse by verse. I don't know if you do chapter by chapter, but it's verse by verse. It's verse by verse, but within a chapter. And, uh, and Hallelujah. And sometimes I'll do one chapter. Sometimes I'll do a half a chapter in the dynamic duo. But most of the time, at least one. I'll spend enough time. And, and the thing that I want to mention here that, that, uh, that's been very helpful to me is that the time I'm in the Word is basically the same time every day. You're being consistent with your appointment well, the with same, God. Well, the same time, yeah, because for me, that just works better for me, it, is that I know, like, first thing in the morning before I do anything, I get up, before I even brush my teeth, I, I get up, and I'll go upstairs as far as to, uh, uh, to my my prayer room and uh and then I, i'll start my morning meditation then late in the afternoon early evenings when i do the dynamic duo and uh uh and, that, and that's just uh, two it's translations. a schedule it's a schedule okay it's two translations going verse by verse starting in maybe right. john gospel of john the scripture that i had for that was proverbs 420 but we don't have to read it right now no, that's okay. Okay, my child, pay, this is good news translation. Pay attention you to like what I good say. News, don't you? Well, it's really easy to read in the dark. <laughs> Listen to my it's words. Got print, <laughs> Never let oh, them. Oh, that's right. Don't tell anybody. <laughs> no, uh, we're transparent. Never let them get away from you. Remember them and keep them in your heart. The word of God is light. Gives life to us. Health to anyone who understands them. Be. Um, What's that word? Oh, mindful. How you think. Your life is shaped. Our lives are shaped by our thoughts. I want to go back to love because I forgot something. Great. This Glory is, to God. Is that the, uh, you, you just hold it so they can see it. That is what Lisa's got uh, with Hazel's expertise. With the H. Uh, helping, the helping as far as to create it. It's three translations of, uh, of love. One Corinthians 13, four through eight or whatever it is. And, uh, uh, but I, I go over that. I read it every meditate on it every day. I've done it for over six months now and boy, it's really helped because it keeps me better in the love mode than what I was in the past. Hazel was so gracious to, um, the Lord prompted me to have another same thing, but when, instead of the word love, you can replace it with your name. So you can learn to say, I am, I am. And we can um, print that off. So everything at kingworldwide.com is to be printed and used in resources for everyone. Number three, walk by faith. Uh, Romans 12, 3 says, is that God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Same measure that Jesus has. Same measure. Same measure that Kenneth Copeland has. Same measure that Lisa King's got. And, uh, but we can develop it more. That's uh, up to no us. No question. We've got the same measure and that same measure is enough uh, in order to move mountains, as we hear in uh, reading in. Uh, so Mark walking by faith was is the third one, right? That's what we're doing. Walking right. by faith. So the Lord said about it's easy to walk by faith when we go to Romans twelve one and two and three. You just said right. Romans three, but one and two is present yourself a living sacrifice. Right. Number two um, is do not conform yourselves to the standards of this world, but let God through His Word transform us inwardly. By the complete change of our mind. One's quality of life is going to be determined, determined by, by what thoughts. they do with their mind. Yes. It's the bottom line is that, uh, and that's where the bombardment of the world takes place, is that to get to capture our mind. That's why all the, the junk that you see on TV. It's and, capturing your mind. Yeah, it, it, that's what it is, is to kind of like put it in a vice so that you have to succumb to it. And that's why, that's why we're in the Word every day. You and us are in the Word every day so that we will have God's Word capture our mind as compared to the world's way. It'll be easier to stand against that. And, and in Walk by Faith, the other point I want to mention, what we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is that that's the, right, Mom. Uh, the, is the, the point as far as that you can have faith and you can also have unbelief at the same time. And you can go back to... Uh, our message, our broadcast two weeks ago, I think it is, and we explained that in a great deal. In my opinion, in my opinion, let me say for me, is that the unbelief factor is the number one blockage of results. In other words, we have faith and 
even those people who develop their faith by being in the Word, if they don't realize that there's unbelief there. If they don't realize that around them it's unbelief, and that unbelief, we've, we've called How another How many people use that word, unbelief, though? Well, probably don't, but it, uh, Jesus... What's another word? Jesus, contamination. Yes. Jesus used it in uh, yes. Mark 17, 20, so, I mean, that's yes. pre- a pretty good indicator yes, as far as that's a good word. But the contamination or junk... Are, are negative. Fear, worry. Ne- negative. Making people fear. The, the fear tree that Lisa's got on the website, right. fear, worry, doubt, Brown unbelief, tree. envy, uh, and anxiety, uh, whatever, all of that is part of the fear tree. Which is all and unbelief. that's part of unbelief. Okay. Good. Next. Okay. Number four, tithe. So Ooh. going over love, time in the word, walk by faith, number four, tithe. And tithe, if you look at the scriptures, a lot of people say it's Old Testament, New Testament. It's got. It's our connector to the blessing. Right. If you want to, if we want to be blessed, it's what God set up for us. It's we are robbing him. Well, I'll let you say it. we're robbing him if we don't tithe. Well, the here's what here's kind of the distinction I make between the old covenant and the new covenant. The old covenant, it was a demand. This is what you do. This is what you do. That was part of the old covenant before Jesus came and suffered burial and resurrection. However, in the new covenant. Is that what it is? What I consider as far as it's our responsibility. Right. It's our responsibility because of all that Jesus has done. Now, in the old covenant, is that uh, it was nice. taught that you go ahead and you give to the temple, you give to your church, if you will. In the, in the New Testament, the new covenant, it's, it's not that ironclad. In most cases, it probably is. But what we do is that we go to Jesus, our high priest, we inquire as to where we ought to go ahead and give our tithe, hey, return, our tithe. return our tithe, is that we, you, we inquire, we listen, we hear, and then we execute. We, we, we go ahead and pay it right there as far as where our high priest tells us to do it. Awful. God is, doesn't need, the, this is the thing, God doesn't need the money. Right. It's not about paying him so he can have money. It is about obeying right. to keep us connected. It gives him access. So a lot of people now say, oh, God, if God loved me, this wouldn't happen, or that my child wouldn't have this, or we wouldn't be suffering, or whatever. We're, if there's any suffering, it's the curse of Satan. Jesus has redeemed us, and Christians don't know their rights and authority through Jesus Christ. This is one of the rights. Tithing protects us, right? But it's got to be done. It's by faith, and you can go to Malachi three ten to understand the old and new. But it's just it's just to help us. Here, here's kind of a mindset that I, I've had for a long time now. When I learned is that when when I tithe or even in giving offerings, sowing offerings, that when I do that, I do it in thanksgiving and celebration yes. for what Jesus has already done for me. Look, he. He, he, sold, he sold out for me. The least I can do is, give is to give back to him what is his. And and uh, so it's a matter of celebration and thanksgiving. And that's why I use the term, it's responsibility. I consider it my responsibility to tithe uh, because of what all he's done for me. I mean, we pay 7, 8, 9, 10% of taxes to the state. God's not saying what he get paid 90%. It's not that it's a mindset for anyone who has have trouble tithing. It's a mindset. And God says money is where your heart is. If you, if you can't do that monthly or every time you have an increase, if we can't do that, then that means that we're bound. We're in fear and unbelief and your life will change. It's the only way that this ministry is a started to be afloat when I started, because right. I did not have money on my own. Yeah. And the, and the point too, is that God's word is all throughout the scripture is that in the New Testament, God's word says is that you tithe where you're spiritually fed. That's why that uh, I am ever conscious as to whom I listen to. You have to be. I'm in the word enough uh, and have been for a while now in order to know what's right and what's wrong, what's halfway and what's not. And uh, therefore, I just don't listen to anybody. I don't care what kind of name they have or and what kind of initials. We shouldn't either. What kind of initials they have after the name and what kind of ministry? I don't just. Uh, I, I know enough about the word so that I can check and balance it to see if that's uh, if that's lined up. And if so, I listen. If not, 
I swear. That's what the Lord said to do. And so don't take it our word. Go to the word yourself. Sure, sure. Get the truth. Okay. La the last one is praise. Hallelujah. It, it, it's that the, uh, if you'll hear the most successful ministers with the most successful uh, ministries, is that you'll always hear them praising God. Praise God. Praise Glory God. to God. And, and, and the reason for that is that they love God and thank and thankful for Jesus what all he's done. But also is that when you praise God, then God himself comes on the scene. We've talked about this in other broadcasts is that when you pray, then the angels will come on the scene. But when you praise the big daddy himself, he's coming on the scene in order to help you and and if you're not, and if you're not praying, then he can't help you. Or praising, and you. No, well, we both you got you got to pray. You got to pray because he can't he can't intervene. He can't assist you with your prayers unless you do pray. Because of the legal right rights have given us authority. We have the authority here on earth and free will. And the thing is, it's sometimes it's a sacrifice of praise. No, I think you could sure. say that sure. better than anyone. That wasn't easy for you to do at first. No, it wasn't. And, Why? Because you thought it was, this is what you said to me, and I'm not cutting them down, I'm, I'm trying to be transparent to help. Right. You said, I have already thanked him for all these blessings, why do I have to keep thanking him? And it was just a mindset, right? So what was that without, mean? Without a doubt. So tell them, because with, you'll with, help with, everybody. Without a doubt, is that, you know, I wasn't the type of person uh, as far as to keep thanking me. If I thanked you once for whatever you <laughs> did, then so be it, let's move on, all right? But... But I wasn't one to thank you and thank you and thank you. Because you felt like it was well being it, a baby. Well, not only that, it was excessive. I didn't need to. I mean, you got ears to hear. So there, did right. you hear me? I thanked you. All right, let's move on to something else. That's really kind of uh, an A-type personality, a task-type personality. But, How do you when, but when I recognized that Jesus had provided for me yes. eternal life and he had provided... Uh, supernatural grace to me for everything that would come yes. my way in yes. life every day. When I recognized that, I would, when that just hit this little brain up here, then at that particular point, I said, man, I am just grateful to thank, 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 All thank, the, Because thank. For, it's for now, past, future, every, it's, the, it's the whole package you're thanking for, right? Well, yeah, because the God's grace is being administered to us through Jesus, by <laughs> Jesus, all the time. So yeah, if, it's, very good. if it was done once, okay, thank, move on. But if it's been done all the time, all throughout every day, well, why not just go ahead and keep this on so thanking huge. it? So therefore, that was that was so a big revelation for me. So you realized to thank before you saw some manifestations that you were thanking for the great, like this is very important. You yeah. were thanking for the grace that you learned that it was always on you, sure. even if some manifestations had not shown up. Yeah, I knew. How the did you get over when, that? When, when I learned that the grace was there, when I learned that that uh, that God had provided everything for us before the foundation of the world, and Jesus had restored it and provided it through His death, burial, and resurrection, and everything that I I would need, every provision every solution for every problem for every situation has already been provided for me then and you then therefore i said well if if it's already there if it's already in my account i just want to thank what i see it or not glory to god and one of the messages that helped you was entering into his rest and it is finished right so if anyone wants yeah, to know how yeah, you came to yeah, that point yeah entering to his rest was the big one what was the big one that's hebrews uh or 9, 10, 11, 12. 10, 11, 12, somewhere in that, that range. You had to 11. meditate on that for months. Oh, big time, big time, a long time. But when I when I got it, it was gone. We went round and round, and it's fun to see yeah, the victories. Yeah, we, we did, we did. But I, it's better when you get it on your own from the Word, because then you can explain it. Yeah. Well, Glory to God. Okay. All right, thank you. We'll All right, here, here oh. it is. Oh. Love, time in the Word, walk by faith, tithe, and praise. Good day. Glory to God. See you all soon.